Um, since young children first start discovering computers and going into their room and being on the computer day and night, they seem to disappear from the real world. But I grew up shy, and people like myself couldn't talk to anyone at school, strangers. It was very awkward. Like, it's like being in any room with people, you're scared. You're scared to be noticed, you're scared to be seen. And all of a sudden, you're in a room and you're private, you're in chats, and all of a sudden you can come out with a flowing personality. So the gate door got open for some people too. Is there more good, more benefit, or you know, more of this negative side? Well, our negative side is you're not dealing people to people, but in the future, maybe we won't. Like, are you, you're, you judge yourself, you think of yourself as a person. But really, today, we're a person plus the tools we use. My abilities are myself, my computer, the internet, the programs I have, the gadgets I have. What if I turned that off? What if you turned off my computer? Period. What, how would I be able to do all these things? What, what place would I have in society? What if we told everybody to turn off a computer? How could, how could we even run things? Um, it's just not possible. So we're already partly human and partly mechanical. And that's just sort of coming. I think that we're going to actually create this, this you know, singularity, the idea that you know, mechanical computerized devices are maybe equal in thinking to a person. It's going to be done by accident because we've already done it. Look at the biggest computer we've got. It's called the Internet. And the Internet has about as many nodes as synapses as neurons in the brain, order of magnitude, number of network connections as synapses in the brain. And all of a sudden, you used to ask a, a smart person a question. Who do you ask now? Google. You know, you go on, you get a whole ton of answers that no smart person could have brought you in most cases. And so we've created a brain, part of a brain, part of thinking, but we didn't intend to. We didn't intend the internet to be a brain. We thought of it very differently. So I think we're going to keep creating more and more of this technology is just going to be a part of our life. Human being is changing. Someday we might have implants to have better vision. And of course, some people will hold out and say, I want to be a natural human. And that's good too. Um, I like that. I might be one of those people. But you could have implants in your ear and you'll hear sounds no other human can hear. And you'll uh, do things on your leg and all of a sudden you can run twice as fast. And I, I, it's, it's, these things aren't, aren't really stoppable. And what computers do to giving us a life on a keyboard isn't really stoppable even though those of us who grew up a different way, it seems like we've lost something. Well, I feel we've lost something because we don't have electronic parts that kids can solder together. People don't buy a computer and write their own programs. They just use pre-written programs, but you can't stop it. Hey, Steve, uh, where do you see the iPhone in two to five years? Well, oddly enough, sometimes products kind of hit a plateau that it's harder to get too much better than that. I see the iPhone, of course, with more memory, holding more programs, songs, more sophisticated ones. I see it working more naturally. I think some of the, some of the iPhones are going to be very small. I, wear, I often wear my little iPod Nano as a watch right now. And it's a very nice interface to use. And I would love that to be the entire smartphone. Although it has a tiny display, it could speak to me and I could speak to it. I think voice recognition is going to become um, more and more a big part of these machines. Apple's probably thinking the same way. They recently bought the company Nuance that does a lot of really great voice recognition for that program I described, Siri Assistant. And they also bought, uh, you know, a company that does mapping. So, you know, I think it's going to become natural speech to get normal human things done by your computer will become another, another mode of input. Look at the changes we've had. The changes are largely in input and output over time. How computers work with people. What are the input devices? You know, we went from keyboards to mice, and then we went and we went from TV screens to little thin CRTs, and they got cheaper and cheaper. We're now going to have flexible displays soon. We're going to be able to make displays maybe in the shape of a world globe, but it's a whole glowing display. So I, I think there's it's a lot of this getting close to being human. A computer that's say teaching you and giving you a, some some test mater some material to learn testing your knowledge of it, correcting you, taking you a little further in the learning. It's kind of like uh, a simulated teacher, but it's not like a human being yet. I think it's going to get more and more like a real human being, looking at you with a camera, noticing that you're tired today, or seeing little signs about you, and acting, act, you know, asking questions about how so-and-so and your family did in the baseball game. 
So a little more, you know, computers are going to become more and more personal and human. 